All right, let's take a look at how we set up a CAT6 UUTP test on the DSX cable analyzer. Now in this case, we're using the DSX 8000. Same setup's going to apply if you're using a DSX 5000. First thing I like to do is come up and go to project. Well, it's tempting to go in and change the default project. It is a really good idea to go in and create a new project. Now on the Versiv, we can have up to 100 projects on the Versiv at a time. I'm gonna come in and select new project and I'm going to say CAT6, and I'll say done. We can give this any name we want. The next thing I'm going to do is put in an operator. Now, I've already got myself in there as Mike. I could say I'm going to add a new operator, and we'll call this operator building. And we'll put in old building here. Boy, I'll get that. And we could put in an email address if we're using Linkware Live. In this case, I'm going to leave it out. So after I hit done, I will come in and I can select the operator. I'll select me. And then I'm going to come into my test. So right here where it says TIA CAT 6A permanent link, I'm going to select that. The first thing we want to do is select our cable type. So in this case, I'm going to select the cable type. This gives us the last used cable types we have. I can select more, and if I know the manufacturer of my cable, I can come in here and select manufacturers. In this case, I'm going to go to generic, and I'm going to select CAT6 UUTP, because I'm using unshielded cable, there's no overall shield, and the individual pairs are not shielded. The next thing is our nominal velocity of propagation. It's important that we use the values given to us by the manufacturer on the box or on the manufacturer's website to determine the nominal velocity of propagation. This value is used to determine the length of the cable, so it's important that we get that correct. I'll say done. Next, I select the test limit, and this is one I see people make a mistake on often, is they select the correct cable type, but they don't select the correct test limit. So in this case, this is what we're going to test the cable to. So if we left this, we would test this CAT6 cable to CAT6A and it would probably fail. So in this case, I can come in and I can select the type. Just like with cable types, we can go to more and I could say TIA, I could say CAT6, and I'm going to choose CAT6 permanent link because in this case, I'm testing from a patch panel to a wall jack. We always want to use the permanent link if we're testing from an RJ45 jack to an RJ45 jack. So I'm gonna come in and select permanent link. We always wanna store our plot data. If you're generating a report for a customer, they expect to see the graphs. And if you're doing this for a warranty cable job, the manufacturer expects to see the graphs. HDTDR TDX. This is what we're going to use to troubleshoot problems. So we have it set to fail and marginal pass. So if the link fails or it's so close to the limit line that we can't tell whether it passed or failed, it's going to run these diagnostics. So we'll go back there. And lastly, we're going to choose our outlet configuration. Here we have 568A or 568B. This will determine which pairs the orange and the green conductors are on. So in this case, orange is on 1-2 and green is on 3-6. If we came back and we selected 568A, we would say green is on 1-2 and orange is on 3-6. This is mostly for documentation purposes. It doesn't really change the outcome of the test. But today we're going to use 568B. I'll say use selected. So now I've set up my cable type, my NVP, my test limit, and my outlet configuration. So I'll hit save. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to delete the default cable ID set. So we'll say delete, and I'll add a new cable ID set. Now, one of the beautiful things about the Versiv that helps us do our testing faster is we can build cable sequences. So here, I'll come in and say 001A. Now, let's say each one of my wall plates has four jacks on it, A, B, C, D. So when I come down to last ID, it'll copy 001A down there. I could back that up, and I could say 96, D. So this will create a sequence for me that goes from 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, all the way up to 96D. 
that's how quickly I can create 384 cable IDs. So right here, it shows me I have a total of 384 IDs and we're gonna be testing copper. Now, if I wanted to see those, I could hit review, shows me my cable IDs, I'll hit save. Now, I'm gonna go back to my home screen. I am ready to start testing. Now, the one other thing I can do to really speed up the testing process is to come in here to next ID and turn on auto save. Now, I only want to do this if I'm testing in order. But if you turn that on, as soon as the test completes, whether it passes or fails, it will save the results and you're ready to move to the next cable. So in other videos, we'll cover how to set reference and some more details about what we can do with the cable analyzer. But in this case, this is how we go in and set up a CAT6 test. Thank you for watching this video and check out our other videos on how to get the most out of your Fluke Networks cable analyzer.